Let's keep going with these free body diagrams and we'll look at a third example which is similar to your third homework problem. Although your homework problem doesn't have this uh, extra force pulling to the side up here. So yours is actually better, simpler. <laughs> um, so here we are with a sample problem. We've got this framework with a weight hanging down and a weight pulling to the side. And it says, find the tension and compression in these two bars. So first off, thinking about your paper towel tube, which joint would you isolate? And here it seems pretty obvious that this joint up here at the top is the one where all the forces are acting. So that's going to be the one that we'll look at through our paper towel tube. And now let's think about diagramming the forces in the bar. Let's think about who is in tension and who is in compression. Well, it seems pretty clear that this rope from which the weight is hanging has got to be in tension. So this force is pulling away from the joint. This bar I should have asked you instead of just jumping ahead. If you've got a force pulling off to the side here, this bar is probably being pulled on, isn't it? So this one is probably in tension and that arrow is pulling away. What about this other bar? If, if these guys are all pulling away, what does that bar feel like? It probably feels some pushing. It is probably in, not probably, it is. <laughs> it is in compression, so that arrow is pointing towards the joint. And uh, when you think about it logically, if the sum of all the forces in the y direction add up to zero, and these two forces were pulling downward, then this one would have to be pushing upward. So now let's think about one bar at a time. So here's this bar over here. It's in tension and if we're looking at just this joint at the top, we draw an arrow pulling away in tension. But think about the, the whole bar. The whole bar is in tension and that means if you went down to the bottom of the bar and you did a free body diagram of this ear down here, you would have a tension arrow pulling away from it and an equal and opposite reaction pulling into the ground. This helps us prepare for thinking about trusses later on. This is essentially a truss, isn't it? It's a, a, a triangle made out of bars. And you'll notice this whole bar is in tension and up at the top we have an arrow pulling away down at the bottom we also have an arrow pulling away and if you wanted to look at the whole bar you would flip-flop that arrow when you move down to the next joint. There, both, both joints are in tension and you flip-flop the arrow when you move from one joint to the next. Now this bar over here is in compression which means it's in compression all the way along it couldn't switch to tension someplace, it would explode if it did that. So it's in compression all the way along. That means if you did a free body diagram down at this joint at the bottom, you would see, yeah, still in compression. The force is pushing towards that joint and that means there's an equal and opposite reaction from the ground pushing back up toward that joint. So here's a free body diagram of that one joint of the bar in tension. That's what it would look like down there. Here's a free body diagram of the other joint that's in compression. Here's what it would look like down there. And the reason for going through all that is because of the way our book words this problem. You'll notice this looks kind of like the example we were just looking at except there's no horizontal pull. And what he says is blah, 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 weights and so forth. Find the reactions 
at A and C. So he's drawn a diagram here with the reaction at A pushing back up and the reaction at C pushing back up. And by the way, I've given you the answers at the bottom of the slide, which you should get, or a near facsimile, get something near those. Uh, so he's saying find the reactions, but let's think about that. Do we really need to do the reactions if this is the same compression all the way along, wouldn't the reaction at the bottom be the same as the compression force at the top? Yes, it would. So which joint would you isolate in order to make a free body diagram? Well, I'm sure you are wisely thinking, you and your paper towel tube are going to be looking at that joint at the top. And you're not going to think about all this other stuff around here. It doesn't matter. You're just going to focus in on that one joint. And so here is a free body diagram at that joint. And here is you drawing a tip to tail with that thousand pound force and those other two arrows. Everybody connected. Oh. I did something wrong here. Uh, don't look at this because I've got two tails together. That's bad, so ignore that. Let's go look at our CAD drawing and you will figure out you will put a tip to a tail and a tip to a tail. Yikes. Okay, let's look at our CAD drawing from our practice problem. Our, our practice problem, recall, here it is had an extra force there, but never mind that. We can handle that. Here's my free body diagram of that joint. Now, these forces are in the thousands. This is a 2,000 pound weight, and I'm not in the mood to draw a line 2,000 units long, so I scaled these to a tenth the size. I made this line, if I measure the distance here, I made this 2,000 pound line 200 things long and there because of my I tried to get tricky with my uh, polyline arrow and I see I've messed up a tiny tiny bit. Okay so what I need to do in this problem I need to string these four forces tip to tail now in your homework, you only have three forces to worry about, thank goodness. Um, in this one, I'm going to, oh, for, what am I doing? First, I'm going to copy these guys, copy, copy, so that I can retain my original free body diagram just in case. All right, and let me go over here. Okay, so this is my copy. Now, things are looking good, but I've got some forces that are tail, 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 and that's no good. So I think I'll start moving things around. And I could do these in any order. I am going to start with the ones where I definitely know their lengths. Because these other slopey dashed line ones, I don't know the lengths. So I'm going to move this one, I know its length, and I'm going to stick it tip to tail, so the tail of one on the tip of the other. Okay, now what can I do? Well, this one has already got its tip onto the tail of the other one. I can just leave that one there. What about this one? Uh, tail tail is no good, so I will grab this one and move its tail over to the tip of the other one. Looky there. So in my, oops, I need to move my 2,000 pound label over here so I don't get confused. In my particular example here, it turns out that one force is really big. It's 2,781 pounds, and another force is pretty small. 
it's 578. Notice how I'm talking? Uh, remember that I drew my drawing at one-tenth scale. So this here is not 278 pounds. I need to be multiplying that number times a times 10. So I'm going to make that number 2781.683 pounds. That's my answer right there. That's that answer. Oops. Move over there. And now I can delete this dimension and do the same with the other one. Now, in your problem, you have one bar that's in tension, one bar that's in compression, and a downward force that's in um, tension. So you are going to need to, let's see, can I do this and without messing up? Let me, let me give this a try. Let me fix the thing I messed up. So, uh, let's see if I can do this in PowerPoint for you. This one, oh yeah, this is an arrow. So this has got to go tip to tail. That's okay. Uh, I could move it over here like this. There is a tip to tail. And then, have I messed something up? I think I have. So tip to tail, tip to tail. This one, okay, you know what I found is that one of these is going the wrong direction. What I did wrong was I drew this arrow in tension and it's not. It's in compression. This arrow needs to rotate 180 degrees because it is in compression and so that makes this guy here in compression. Sorry I did that. That is not good. Okay, there's that guy in compression and now here's what your arrows will look like. Let me move the text out of the way so you can see what's happening. Move the text. Okay. Here's what your arrows will look like. So the two bars are in compression. The rope is in tension. And that will let you stick the arrows together tip to tail. And this is an interesting demonstration. How do you know you've got the bars, the arrows going the wrong direction? If there is no way to stick them together tip to tail, somebody is going the wrong direction. And that's what we just discovered here. So now we've got them all going the right direction. We can make a tip to tail and all is well.